Welcome to my lecture online. So this video here shows two purposes. The first purpose is to kind of tie in what we saw in the previous videos is that if there's a binary star system, the stars would have kind of erratic behavior because of the gravitational interaction between them. But then there's a second part of it. Let's say that we're observing a solar system far away and there's a singular star there and there's some planets around the star. And we want to try to figure out how big those planets are, how far away they are, by observing the motion of the star. So here's an example where if the planets are big and they're relatively close to the star, the motion will be very erratic. If they're far away, then it's much more difficult to detect. So here, if we take a look at the location of where our sun is at any point in time in the year, starting from 1960, to the year 2000, if this point where the two lines cross is where the Sun would be if it was not affected by the gravitational attraction of all the, the planets around them, then you can see how they move around. And each tick mark is about 100,000 miles. So sometimes the Sun is like 400,000 miles or farther away from the location where it would be if there was no gravitational interaction. Knowing that the orbital period of Jupiter is 11.86 years, almost 12 years, and the orbital period of Saturn is a little over 29 years, you can see definitely a pattern based upon Jupiter alone, because Jupiter has by far the greatest gravitational attraction to the Sun, and so most of these circles last a period of about 12 years, in tune with the orbital period of Jupiter, and then superimposed upon that are the almost 30-year cycles of the orbit of Saturn. So sometimes the orbit gets pulled in one direction, sometimes it gets pulled in the other direction, based upon that mutual attraction between Jupiter and Saturn. So you can see that in 1960 it was here, then in 1965 it was here, then in 1970, 1975, right here, then we get to 1980, way out there, 1985, then it came zooming in, 1990 was almost where it would be if there was no attraction between the planets and the sun, then it got pulled back out, 1995, the year 2000, and this on and on, and this is going to go on for billions of years. The sun is just going to kind of bounce around based upon the mutual attraction of Jupiter, Saturn, and of course the other six planets as well. The other planets do not have as much of an effect, but they do, and so there is that mutual attraction. Now, if you were able to track this in another solar system, that would be kind of difficult to do because from the Earth's vantage point, the angle that we're talking about, if at the maximum distance away the Sun could go as far as 500,000 miles away from the central location of the center mass, to divide about 93 million miles, which is the distance from the Earth to the Sun, we're talking about an angle of 0.3 degrees, which is 20 arc minutes. And that's simply for only a distance of 93 million miles away, one astronomical unit. Imagine what that motion would look like of a star that is many light years away. And of course, that motion would be very difficult to detect, but we could detect it to some extent by the shift of the light the Doppler shift of the light, and that's one of the ways in which we can actually determine the presence of other, uh, of other planets by noticing a slight shift in the moving forward and backward of the star because it's being pulled by the planets. So that's actually how we detect planets as well. But you can see that if instead of planets we had other stars in our solar system, that would be much more erratic and that would definitely have an effect on the orbit of the Earth and therefore the the, what we would now see as the normal stable temperature we have on the Earth would then be much more erratic and life would have a much harder time dealing with that. And that is how we know. There's a dot between 1960 and 1965. Is there a reason for that one? Oh, there's another dot. Yes, yes. Um, let's see, 1960, 65, 70, 75, 80. 85, 90, 95, and 2000. You know what? I think I made that as a reference dot to figure out where it was going through, and I didn't need to make it so thick. So yeah, that was an error. No dots supposed to be there. <laughs> would, they, um, would the orbits ever repeat itself? The likelihood of a rep repetition of the orbits is virtually zero. It's just a continual mess pattern, and because of all the different pulls of all the planets, it's really 
the chance that all the planets are in the exact same spot and it no no i would say almost impossible <laughs> it's like winning the lottery even more so somebody does does win the lottery well the sun would not win the lottery so if there's no planet the sun would be in the middle if there's no planet the sun would be in the middle and stay in the middle and not move okay. that's right and uh, how big would the sun be in that where would be that that's the center of the sun, right? So the dots would be bigger than the sun. But the dots would be bigger than the sun? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'll take that back. No. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No. That, no, the sun would be, that would be really weird. Um, so the sun is, let's see, 866,000 miles across. So let me draw the sun for you. And the sun would be about... This big? That's a good question. So that's, that's the side of the sun. The sun would just kind of wiggle around. So the center of the sun, which would be here, sometimes will be here, there, 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 depending upon where. So. There's no planets around the sun. And the, the sun would just sit there and not move. That's right. Well, the sun moves in other ways. It moves around the galaxy and it rotates on its axis and all kinds of other things. I'm glad you asked that question. 